One of the largest fears around today is the surroundings of a recession in the coming future. Negative growth has impacted numerous countries globally, and the Philippines is likewise a vulnerable country to this. However, as cited by policymakers and top economists of the country, there will be no recession. According to Finance Secretary Benjamin Diokno, he has cited that due to the factors that they are seeing, there is likely no recession that can happen. Factors cited are unemployment going down to 5%, restoration of mining, the power industry, and manufacturing. Further on, Finance Secretary Diokno has also indicated that it is because the Philippines is less reliant on external factors, and much so by its domestic economy. Therefore, any trouble spilled globally will have less effect on the Philippines itself. This might be why the governments and even external institutions have raised the bar on the overall economic growth of the Philippines. According to the different agencies, the growth prospect predicted for the Philippines by the end of 2022 is likely to be in the range of 6.5 to 7.5 percent. But as cited in the coming next year in 2023, the targets have been lowered to as low as 5.2 percent by the S&P. The Asian Development Bank has, however, estimated that it will be 6.3% growth, which may be a bit lower than the current 2022 year. But it is still high, considering many cited macroeconomic factors, and is still higher than the ASEN plus 3 GDP growth. On the country's debt to GDP, on the other hand, Finance Secretary Diokno has once again cited that they predict it will go down to 50% by 2028. Momentum is needed, but in reality, also not in bad shape. The current ratio is somewhere around 63.7%, a 17-year high, however. By all standards, the country is far from any sort of shock such as those felt in recent times like Sri Lanka. Further on, while the overall debt of the country posted a record high of about 13.5 trillion Philippine pesos, it should still not be much of a worry. Just like our statement of a few seconds ago, the reason why everything is still stable right now is that the country's debt mainly consists of domestic debt and less of those borrowed overseas. And it is also comparatively competitive compared to other similar nations, such as Thailand and Malaysia, which also sits around the 60% benchmark. Moving on, the debt to GDP by the coming year's end will also see a decrease to 61.8% and a further 61.3% by 2023 and 60.6% by 2024, as predicted by Secretary Diokno. While the total debt of 13.5 trillion pesos will still continue, what will ensure this ratio goes down is the growth of the Philippine GDP. Because the country is predicted to grow this year, the coming year and following years, the pace of GDP growth will overtake the pace of borrowings. The only issue with increasing debts is repayments. If the Philippine continuously borrows, it must also take into account debt repayments. Because as everybody knows how debt works, in the budget of the government, they have used 10.8% or over 541 billion pesos to repay its debt burden. This is simply saying for every one peso that the government collects from tax revenues from its government's businesses, they will use 10% of those to pay down the debts. A fairly massive amount, however, does take note that these debts were used to initiate an infrastructure, a certain program or any government operations. These repayments will be an issue if the government fails to collect sufficient revenues. So in conclusion, if we go by the words of Finance Secretary Diokno, of course, the Philippines will not go into recession anytime soon. And further on, as he suggested in other institutions, the country will continue to grow and its debt to GDP ratio will also go down. A simple explanation was given to ensure that despite debt to GDP going down, the Philippines must also cater to its repayments and ensure that the government collects sufficient revenues. Revenues such as taxes, but do take note that while the country will not go into a recession in 2023, what is expected is slow growth. As we mentioned earlier, some analysis have predicted that the economy will only grow by about 5.2%. However, there are also some other analysts that are predicting that it can grow by as low as 4.5%. But one should take note of factors that can change as we go along. If anything can tell us about these estimates is that they frequently change. Depending on many unexpected factors, factors that contributed massively this year were due to the inflation crisis, an unexpected war in Europe, massive shortages, and so on. So going by 2023, who knows what the economy will actually look like. But anyway, 
Do you think the Philippines will be impacted by external factors next year? Or will it continue to grow regardless of any troubling matters? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching.